After six months, proof that Israel's longest war since the 1980s is winding down? Or is the weekend announcement of troops withdrawing from southern Gaza the calm before a whole new storm? Prime Minister Netanyahu insists his forces will be making a move for the southernmost city of Rafah, and this despite strong objections from the United States, which is now pressing for a ceasefire and the ramping up of desperately needed humanitarian aid for Palestinian civilians. Last week's uh, killing of seven aid workers gave the international community a startling insight into all that's gone wrong with Israel's Gaza strategy. And while indirect truce negotiations continue at a low simmer, the prime minister continues to promise the total eradication of Hamas. So what's there to stop there being another six months of war? Today in the France 24 debate, Israel's drawdown from southern Gaza. Joining us uh, from Jerusalem, France 24, Chief International Affairs Editor Robert Parsons. Thanks for being with us. From London, Hello, Nomi so. Bar Yaakov, Associate Fellow at uh, Chatham House. So good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you for having me on the show. And we'll be joined shortly by Joe Macron, Global Fellow with the Wilson Center's Middle East Program. Your reactions on the hashtag F24 debate. Yeah, a sign of hope or a reminder of all that's still needed. Images this Monday morning of fuel trucks entering the Gaza Strip from Egypt. It's just a trickle when you think of the immense needs after six months of war. Yinkyo Otade has more on the displaced who Sunday for the first time returned to the southern city of Han Yunus. They had fled fighting in Han Yunus earlier in the war. And now that Israeli forces say they are pulling out of the southern city, these Palestinians have returned. But the city they once knew is now a landscape of ruins. I couldn't find my home because it was just rubble. Where is my home now? I don't know. This is no way to live. Israel stressed that the pullout is tactical rather than a sign that the war may be moving closer to its end. The army is now eyeing up the southern city of Rafa as its next target. We will continue with our mission to destroy Hamas. The Prime Minister was very clear about that in his statements yesterday about Rafa. Um, we will continue on to Rafa. We will destroy Hamas. Rafa is Hamas's last remaining stronghold. It's also home to some 1.4 million people who are sheltering there. There's been global opposition to the plans for a ground operation in the southern city, including from Israel's top ally, the U.S. Washington is demanding to see a credible plan to protect civilians in Rafa. The calls have fallen on deaf ears. According to Israeli media, the military is preparing to begin evacuating Rafa within the next week. Robert Parsons, uh, we're seeing press reports out of Israel sources in the military saying that they're preparing to send 40,000 tents uh, uh, to, move, to, to house uh, displaced uh, uh, civilians uh, for that uh, push into Rafa. Uh, what to make of it? Is, is this the plan or is this part of the bargaining strategy? I think it's more part of the bargaining strategy because, frankly, Francois, everybody is uh, guessing at the moment what the uh, is Israeli government plans to do next. Uh, certainly, there have been some straws in the wind that Rafa remains a target. Uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu who has said he still regards Rafa as being absolutely critical to the military defeat of Hamas. Uh, we know, however, that the United States is putting huge pressure uh, on Israel not to go ahead with that, at least until it has put in place a sufficiently effective uh, provision for the hum humanitarian protection of the population of Rafa. Uh, but on the other hand, you know, we have that withdrawal uh, from southern Gaza. We don't know quite what it means at the moment, wh whether it indicates perhaps that Rafa is off the agenda or whether it's simply the I IDF recalibrating before it goes back in to southern Gaza for an attack on uh, Rafa. Uh, but certainly there is some concern on the right wing of Israeli politics. Uh, Itamar Ben-Gvir, national security minister, warned 
Benjamin Netanyahu today that if he didn't go ahead with a major attack against Rafa, he would lose his mandate to govern. So you know, we don't really know for sure. There are, there are doubts on both sides at the moment, I think, about what precisely this withdrawal means. What does this withdrawal mean? Nomi Baryakov. Well, I agree to a large extent with Rob. I think um, there is tremendous there is tremendous amount of pressure on Netanyahu specifically from the United States. And what has been said in public is only, we can presume, a very small, uh, just sort of the tip of what has been said in private. Um, there's no doubt whatsoever that he was not planning um, to withdraw from um, Gaza um, and from the from southern Gaza today, and this announcement came rather suddenly. I think that's quite indicative. Talks in Cairo are very, very serious, and I think much will depend on the outcome. I think we need to take with a pinch of salt his rhetoric. We do know that he'd like to invade Rafa. We do know that there are around 1.5 million displaced Palestinians. So it serves him well if he can move them um, back to Han Yunus and potentially uh, further north. However, um, I think all eyes on what's happening in Cairo. And hopefully there will be a ceasefire brokered in Cairo. And then, um, yes, they will say that they are planning to invade um, Rafa after the ceasefire, but the ceasefire is not going to be two or three days. The ceasefire should probably be around six weeks. And then, you know, we're in a different ballpark by then. So I'm cautiously optimistic. It could go you, either You're way. cautiously optimistic, Nomi, but ju just to be yes. clear, when you hear Benjamin Netanyahu state, as he did on Sunday, that Israel is, quote, one step away from victory uh, in the Gaza Strip, is he talking himself into a corner or simply uh, setting it up so that afterwards he can blame the international community for the fact that he didn't get to, quote, finish the job? Yes, the latter. He's setting, he's, he's uh, you know, he's a master politician and there's a tremendous amount of international pressure on him. And he is saying, oh, we're a step from victory, which frankly is nonsense. Um, there, you know, Israel isn't a step from victory. Uh, six months into the war, and there are at least four Hamas battalions intact um, in the south, and some still operating, not full battalions, but there's certainly Hamas um, cells have returned also to the north. So I think, you know, he's under tremendous pressure. So yes, he's preparing the grounds to say, this isn't my fault. He's very good at blaming others. Others, um, and very rarely, if ever, takes any blame himself. But clearly, um, there is a lot to blame him for. All right, we can, as promised, welcome uh, the Wilson Center's Joe Macaron to the conversation. Thanks for being with us here in the France 24 debate. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, the, uh, the, um, do you agree with Nomi there that uh, uh, this was a bit of a surprise, this sudden announcement that... Uh, uh, Israeli troops were withdrawing from southern Gaza. W withdrawing or regrouping, in your view? Uh, I, I think it's not a surprise. It's part of a trend. Uh, I think Netanyahu has been bluffing for a while about the, uh, the Rafah uh, attack to pressure the international community in the negotiation. Uh, he has been withdrawing troops since a while. Now the only troops left are two brigades, are, uh, separating the north and the south. The rest are on the border uh, between Gaza and, and Israel. Uh, the, the Americans are hearing from the IDF that there's a fatigue after after all these months. Uh, that uh, obviously, you know, uh, there's no more international community support. Uh, the objectives are not as clear uh, as, as they were in, in, the, in the beginning or achievable. Uh, so I think Netanyahu has announced like four times so far that he wants to order the IDF to go into the, the Rafah. The last time was under before just before going to anesthesia. So uh, it's not been seriously, uh, I think, uh, taken over this time. I think he's trying to pressure basically to improve the negotiation in, uh, in Egypt uh, that are ongoing. Uh, everybody wants a way out. Nobody knows how uh, because nobody knows what the day after. Uh, obviously, he's stuck between his political survival, as, as I mentioned before, and the right wing, and also the American pressure and 
the domestic pressure in uh, uh, in Israel. So I think everybody is, is trying now to, to to find a way out, and it's look it looks like it's shaping up a little bit. Now. All right, so the, the panel unanimous on this, and there is that outside pressure, as you mentioned, among those who've called for an immediate ceasefire. The Pope, this Monday, he held a private audience at the Vatican with members of five Israeli families whose kidnapped loved ones uh, were taken to Gaza. But, uh, uh, Joe, as you were saying, it's that pressure from the West and in particular from the United States that's being uh, brought to bear. Uh, how strong do you feel that pressure is from Washington right now? Um, I think in the last weeks we started to see a little bit of a shift. We see the, the opponents of Netanyahu has been hosted. We, we saw Senator Schumer speaking. Uh, there are some reports of slowing in uh, ammunition. Uh, we saw more the Biden call. Uh, but it didn't reach a point yet where they, they talk about stopping uh, the arms. Uh, obviously, Biden is under uh, a big pressure whether from the Democrats, from the left, from minorities, the elections coming up, he wants to get Gaza out of the campaign. So he doesn't want to hear about it in the news. Uh, so he's trying to wrap it up more. Obviously, the Israeli have other calculations, especially Netanyahu. Uh, but, uh, 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 but we didn't see him yet going as far as linking to the, uh, to the uh, armament, linking to other, to other things. He's still dancing around it. But we see a gradual... Uh, increase of, of, of pressure, especially in, in recent weeks. Robert Parsons, uh, we're seeing signs. Uh, later this Monday, um, the White House is going to be welcoming both one of the opposition leaders, Naftali Bennett, and some of those hostage families. The White House, which says that over the weekend, the CIA director went to Cairo uh, as part of those truce talks that uh, Nomi was talking about. Uh, where you are, uh, is there the feeling that Washington has called time on this? Well, you know, I don't know what's being said in private, but there's no doubt that the message to Benjamin Netanyahu has got progressively tougher, particularly since the attack on World Central Kitchen. Uh, that, that seems to have been the key inflection point here. Uh, Joe Biden is under pressure himself in the United States with more and more members of his own party in Congress saying, look, enough is enough. We, we have to condition the supply of arms to progress uh, with Israel. Israel has to accept our terms. So, you know, I think perhaps in private, uh, the, the message that Netanyahu is getting is much tougher than the one we're hearing, public, hearing in public. Uh, and undoubtedly, you know, we, we've seen signs. Perhaps, perhaps the, for instance, the, uh, the decision to pull the troops out of southern Gaza can be interpreted as a sock to Hamas in these talks in Cairo, under pressure perhaps from the United States, uh, along with the provision of extra aid through uh, Kerem Shalom, through Erez, and more coming into the to the Ashdod port now. So the combination of factors that you know do suggest that Benjamin Netanyahu is feeling the pressure. I, both Israel uh, and Hamas downplaying uh, uh, optimism that was voiced very vocally by both uh, Egypt and Qatar uh, of a possible breakthrough in those truce negotiations. However, Israel's defense minister talking up his side's bargaining position after the Gaza just the southern Gaza drawdown, speaking to new army conscripts, Yoav Gallant stating, achievements enabled us to be flexible, to act freely, to make difficult decisions in order to bring back the abductees. I believe we're at an opportune moment, but there's another side that must agree to it. Nomi Bar Yaakov, uh, does the defense minister speak for his boss, the prime minister, when he's stating that it's an opportune moment? Well, I think he's speaking for himself. I mean, I think he would like to see the uh, hostages back. I think the ah. only, um, I think there's been a shift um, in Israel um, with regards to the hostages. It's very, very clear that they were ah. not a priority, and the priority was to ah. um, try to defeat Hamas. But now the pressure is mounting from in for internally. Ah. Um, and many of the hostages um, have been pronounced dead. A body of one of the hostages was um, retrieved in the last uh, 48 hours, and um, many more hostages are presumed dead or dying. So the pressure is absolutely on because they do not want to bring back 133 coffins.
So uh, yes, he's speaking, I think, for himself, not only for his boss. And what, what, what does a deal, what does a truce deal look like at this point? Well, it's very complicated because Hamas is um, demanding a complete withdrawal, Israeli withdrawal from Gaza, and um, they are in Israel would like to, the IDF would like to keep control of the northern part of Gaza, or at least to have a checkpoint um, between the north and south. Um, otherwise, they feel they would not have achieved anything. Then, of course, there's the question of how many um, Palestinian prisoners will be released and what kind of Palestinian prisoners? In other words, are they those who are considered heavy, meaning those who have committed, um, uh, who have murdered Israelis directly? So there's a lot of opposition and I, assuming there are two types of um, deals that are being discussed and all for all deals, so all the hostages for all the Palestinian prisoners or a staggered approach. Eid al-Fitr, the end of Ramadan, the um, coming in tomorrow, probably, um, and depending on the moon. And there's a lot of pressure to try to get something done imminently. So um, it is possible that they will reach a temporary cessation of hostilities for the release, for example, of the women, children, uh, wounded and elderly as a first stage. And then Netanyahu may be cornered, because once you have a staggered approach, which is more likely than an all for all, um, then you are, you know, you, it's not necessarily the case that he'll be able to invade um, Rafa later on. I think one, we really need to take it a day at a time. And if a cessation of hostilities as in, in phase one, releasing just the women and children and wounded and elderly, that also won't happen in one day. So again, one has to sort of uh, take a deep breath and rethink and recalibrate every day with the hope that this will continue and continue and eventually be a permanent ceasefire. Um, that, that's that's the hope. That's the optimistic case scenario. And, and Nomi Baryakov, how, how seriously do you take that threat that uh, Robert Parsons was reporting on uh, by uh, the far-right coalition partner of Benjamin Netanyahu to slam the door if they don't go for Rafa? Well, you know, they're messianic. They live in a different world. They do not live in our world and they do not live on planet Earth. So um, if, if they leave, they will leave. I mean, they've, they've made so many threats. Um, they, in, in fact, they were not, he would, um, um, he would have voted Ben Greer, the minister in question, against the A deal, against opening errors. They actually brought the vote forward knowing that he will be late for the meeting, and he made a point of ensuring that the whole, you know, that everybody in Israel will know that he wasn't part of the vote and he was betrayed. So I think the the, the issue is how to uh, ensure that the vote on the hostage deal deal will be not in the uh, government, but in the in you know, you, one needs the entire. Uh, Knesset probably to vote, and you hear all the opposition saying we need we need our votes in. This is not something that can. This is not a decision that can be taken by the current government. So there is a question. If they leave, they leave. I think Netanyahu is under threat both from the right and from the left. But so far, I mean, Ben Gvir will leave if he thinks he'll be the next prime minister, and he's very popular um, in the polls. They are unfortunately he has quite a large base. Um, so he, it is possible that he will defect and then the government will fall, but I do not think it's going to happen imminently. Well, Joe Macron, um, if there is a true deal, uh, then does the temperature go down a notch throughout the region? It's been a tense day again uh, at uh, Israel's northern border, the Israelis uh, claiming the death of a senior Hamas, uh, sorry, Hezbollah commander. And uh, the leader uh, of the uh, Iran-backed movement stating that uh, there's going to be retribution uh, over that bombing at the uh, uh, Iranian consulate in Damascus. I mean, the roots of all these tension, regional tensions, are linked uh, to, to Gaza somehow. Uh, I think the, the Iranians are trying to avoid direct confrontation. Uh, recently, they've been pressuring the Americans so they can pressure the Israelis. Now, the Israelis have been increasing the offensive in, in recent uh, months, attacking Iran directly. Uh, the lack of Iranian response obviously will be seen as, uh, as a further weakness. So this is going to continue this dance beyond even, uh, uh, even, even Gaza. It's hard for the Americans now, by the administration, to distance themselves from what's happening between Israel and Iran. 
uh, they are trying to avoid it in uh, uh, in, in that sense. But obviously, I mean, the trigger is uh, remains in uh, uh, in Gaza. That will everything will be basically uh, torn down after 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 this. But the issue is, I don't think Gaza is gonna finish suddenly. There'll be incremental deals that will leave the region a little bit in. Uh, 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 in, in tension. So uh, the talk about multiple fronts against Israel, uh, it's not materialized yet. We didn't see Iran really uh, leading those attacks. They, they they basically kept the Lebanese border busy and there was the Hosea attack, but we didn't see the Syrian front moving or the Iraqi front uh, moving uh, uh, seriously. So uh, I think, as I said, everything goes back to Gaza in, in, in the coming weeks. All right, we shall continue to watch it. Joe Macron, I want to thank you so much for joining us. I want to thank Nomi Barba Yaakov in London, Robert Parsons, uh, who's uh, in Jerusalem for France 24. There's more on our website, france24.com.